It's the Not For Long Podcast with Mike Gill, Colin Thompson, and producer Hunter Brody. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And welcome into another edition of the Not For Long Sports Podcast. My name is Colin Thompson. Really excited to talk to you guys this week. We have a special guest, but before we get to him, I want to introduce uh, the, Mike, the great Mike Gill. He can't join us today. He's got a lot going on. It's that time of year, but the great Hunter Brody, our producer. Hunter, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. You know, a little disappointing with the Eagles, and ironically enough, here we have it, a, a Dolphins player. I wasn't thrilled on Sunday, but here we are. I had to have one of my former pr- roommates, uh, truly one of my best friends on on the podcast. He is currently on the practice squad for the Miami Dolphins and, and, and uh, a guy who who is local to the Philadelphia area, went to Sheltonham High School, walked on at Temple, earned a scholarship uh, because of my tutelage at tight end, of course. And uh, 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 no, it, both of us played for the great Ed Foley. Both of us work with Pro Star Sports. Um and, and Paul and, and Warren over there, and I just want to have Chris on this week, the great Chris Meyer. Chris, how you doing today? Doing good, guys. Thank you for having me on. Wow, Hunter, a Miami Dolphin on the Not for Long Sports podcast. After <laughs> we're not we're not a Philly podcast by any means. We want to be national as possible. Chris, our first NFL player on the podcast, had to be done. But mm. Hunter, talk us, take us into where we get into Chris. Take us into your feeling <laughs> from. The beatdown that the Dolphins and Fitz Magic put on the Eagles on Sunday. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about it. But here's the thing. I find it entertaining when stuff like this happens because I realize that the talking points are now different. And it, there's so much passion behind the talking points of who is Doug Peterson, what's going on with Carson Wentz, this team's a dumpster fire. I almost find that more intriguing than, say, blowing the Dolphins out. Yeah, I mean... a I, bad fan? <laughs> no, it does not. I, someone to this the other day said... <laughs> You know, the NFC East has got these really big metropolitan cities in Dallas and D.C. and Philly and New York. And New York's a huge brand, and so is Dallas, and Philly's on its way. Uh, and the history of the, uh, of the Redskins is there, too. And the ratings are going to drop. And I said, that's fine. The ratings may drop. But the kicker is the offseason now, the ratings will be even higher because of the offseason stories of what's coming from all four teams in the NFC East. So NFC East is a dumpster fire officially. You can officially wait to say it. <laughs> And I don't think it's because of the Miami Dolphins' loss. I've been saying it for weeks now. Miami's a team trending the right direction. Uh, I like their head coach. I like everything about them. And we're going to dive into that with Chris. But, Chris, uh, reactions of the team this week, uh, your feeling going into the game, and, and how was the game for you? Where did you watch the game? Uh, so I watched the game in the box. Um, you know, as a practice squad member, we come in Sunday mornings to the stadium. We get a little workout in on the field shower up and then we head to one of the boxes to uh, watch the game so um coming into the game you know it was a little a little interesting being a uh, being an Eagles fan growing up um so you know actually I would say probably the crowd there at the game was probably 70 percent Eagles fans so I kind of had to you know remind myself I'm here with the Dolphins you know I can't I can't be rooting for the Eagles now but that, that wasn't that wasn't too hard to do so what was the feeling around the team this week? Now, are you guys feel like you're a team treading the right direction? Is there, do you guys listen to the outside media where everyone's saying, you know, the Dolphins aren't what, you know, what, what are the Dolphins? We don't know what they are. They're, they're a losing team, but they've won and beat some deep good teams. And, you know, what was the feeling around the facility this week? I mean, honestly, after, ever since after week two, uh, there's been a good feeling in the facility. You know, those at the second week was, I think, one of our, I think it was the Patriots. That was another big loss. But after that, you know, we're like, we're, we're done with the blowouts. This isn't happening anymore. We're keeping every game close from here on out. And then obviously getting the first win against the Jets, you know, you got that taste of victory. Everyone's, you know, just grinding hard, trying to get another one. And uh, every every week was winnable from, from there on out. So, I mean, it was just another week, week in the building. You know, we can win this game. Hunter? Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, what's it like with Fitz Magic back there? He's this veteran guy with the grizzly beard, and he does have some really solid games. Now, of course, it seems like they always come against Jim Schwartz. He's an Eagles killer. Yeah. Eagles killer. <laughs> what's it like uh, with, with him being the leader back there? It's great. It's great. He's a, he's a great guy, you know. Uh, Harvard grad, super smart, but he's not not a snobby guy at all. He's, he's fun to be around, just a great guy all in all, great leader. 
Yeah, uh, Harvard so guy. Like, what very, type of, ta- very talented. What type of Harvard knowledge does he drop on you guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I haven't heard, heard him flex his book smarts too much. I'm sure he could, but, you know, he's – Super football smart, you can tell. You know, he'll come, he'll pop his head into the tight end meeting room, uh, drop some knowledge on a play here or there. You know, maybe you throw in a new route for us to run. Uh, talk about what he what he wants to see versus this coverage or stack coverage. You know, you can just tell he's he, he's got a lot going on upstairs. So, I wanted to touch on something that Chris mentioned that the, when the Dolphins come in on game day, being on the practice squad as a guy who's who spent a year with the Bears and eight weeks of the last year of the John Fox era on the practice squad. I didn't realize that all organizations do things differently with their practice squad. Some, like Seattle, I believe, takes their practice squad on the road. They travel with the team. They do every with the team other than dress on game day. Some, like Chris do, going for a workout, go watch in the box. Some don't even have to come to the, to, from, come to the stadium. And then in Chicago, when I was there with John Fox, and then Matt Nagy, the practice squad, does everything with the team, does not travel, but is on the sideline for game day. But I wanted to clear that up. Now, Chris, do you guys travel with the team on the way games or no? We do not. We do not. So yeah, some, that's sometimes it's, it's not it's not such a bad thing. You know, you get a little extra day off on, on Sunday, but it's tough not being out there with your guys. So Yeah, it's weird because you're with the team the entire week. You're grinding. You're right. doing everything. And all of a sudden, you, like, eat lunch with the team exactly. come Saturday. Yeah, and they're hopping on a plane and you're going home. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. And – it's not like college where, and it's something that we'll discuss, discuss again. We'll have Chris on over the summer. We're going to do a little more sit down with guys, full hours. We're going to do about 30 minutes a day with Chris again, talking to great Chris Meyer at Dolphins tight end. Follow him on Twitter at C M Y A R I C K at C Meyer. Um, but I wanted to discuss, wow, I forgot my train of thought. What was I going with it? Help me out here. Oh, practice squad. Uh, practice squad. No, Chris, I wanted to discuss uh, – I was talking about this. In college, say the team travels, there's still 40 guys hanging back on the weekend. There's still mm-hmm. stuff to do. You know, Chris and I live 30, 40 minute to an hour train ride away from Temple University where we went. So if you didn't travel or you hurt or whatever, there was something to do. Now you get to the NFL, there's a 10-man practice squad. Mm-hmm. Five of the guys may not – maybe getting cut next week. You have no idea. Uh, you're still living in an extended stay, so there's so much terminal. How have you adjusted to the non-college life where guys go home, they're married with kids, you know, guys have marketing things. There's no true, true camaraderie because it's such a uh, – the league just flips over constantly. How have you adjusted to the difference of college and professional football? Well, you're right. Yeah, so the practice squad guy, I'd say there's a, probably been about a three, like, man, ro- kind of rotating door. You know, there's kind of been guys rotating in and out throughout the practice squad all year and um like you said going on on or non-travel for college you know that was something i i had to go through as a redshirt freshman you know i had i was going home every weekend uh non-traveling with the team and uh so that's kind of it's kind of like this again for me but honestly uh i've been try, trying to do stuff with some of the practice squad guys you know it's, it's tough every weekend because sometimes guys got family in town uh they, they may not want to hang out and such but for the most part, uh, been lucky to watch a lot of Temple football on the Saturdays uh, when the team's heading out of town, or uh, even uh, NFL football on Sundays when they're when the Dolphins are away. So you know, I get to watch watch a lot of football, which I, I love to do. You mentioned Temple football, and something that's near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, most of the staff that Chris and I played for now are either at Florida. I mean, excuse me. Wow, I'm in Florida now. Happy to be back <laughs> in the great state. Just got to Tampa. I check into the XFL team now. I'm waiting in the parking lot after this. And I'm going to go check in after. Um, most of the staff that Chris and I was with is at Baylor or really for Chris, Georgia Tech. Not so yeah. not so much for me. A few guys sprinkled in there. Uh, talk about what Temple football means to you uh, and, and what is the weight that Temple football carries around the NFL? Because I know when I was with Chicago and New York, it carried a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it means the world to me. You know, they gave me my opportunity. Uh, I'm here today because of Temple football. And uh, like you said, uh, it carries a lot of weight in the NFL. You know, it seems like every every week this year, you know, we're scouting the, we're scouting the team we're playing. Then you look you look on the depth chart. Oh, here's a Temple guy. You know, I feel like it, it hasn't been like that in a, in a while. But you know, with the it seems like recently Temple's really been uh, unloading a, a huge crop into the NFL. So it's pretty cool to see you know someone you know uh, on a different NFL team every week. 
Yeah, that is so cool. And I think another thing that's neat too is there's so many coaches, there's so many people, just really yeah. the Philadelphia area from Pittsburgh to PA to South Jersey to Maryland, that whole Ohio, that corridor, there's so many coaches too. So you meet guys that either coach at Temple, um, mm-hmm. been through Temple. Uh, so it's special to me. I know when I was with the Giants, because of Matt Rule's time there, people would be screaming Temple Tough down the hallway. <laughs> and I'm, I'm walking next to – Evan Ingram, the first round pick, and I'm the undrafted tight end. Like they shouldn't be talking to me <laughs> by any means. Evan's a freak and a great player and a great guy. So, no, it's really unique, and and uh, that's great to hear. But I, Chris, I want to talk about this. And Chris and I are roommates at Temple for several years, and um, become great friends. And and you know we always watch the Eagles together every Sunday. We watch mm-hmm. Zach Ertz every Sunday. And this week at practice, you wore number eighty six, like I did when I was in Chicago. <laughs> When the Eagles played the Bears and now the Dolphins played the Eagles because it's practice squad tight end for everybody out there. They they represent the other team's tight ends. What was that like to wear 86 in practice? Uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You know, coming from Temple, I'm sure you can attest to this. Uh, we probably didn't get too many passes thrown to us throughout <laughs> our college career. No, I think I had, so, I had, I had three run, catches my senior year. <laughs> to, run, to run a scout team, uh, you, you know, where – they're pretty much in two tight end set. We, we pretty much ran a two tight end set the entire week, every scout period. So I was either Goddard or Ertz. Um, you know, they're telling the quarterback, force feed it to us. And I thought that was, thought that was really cool, you know. Um, so it was, it was fun to sh- show what I can do. You know, I, I, I still say I'm receiving tight end, even though people try to say otherwise. But I hear you. I, uh, I thought I, I did a good job this week. Um, Dolphins shut down Ertz. He didn't have too too hot of a day, so I'm pretty happy with what I did this week. Breaking news. Chris Myers says that because of his practice card <laughs> performance, the Eagles shut down Zach Ertz. Let's tweet that out, Hunter. <laughs> no, I got a question for you. If if you're on the practice squad and say say you are pretending to be Zach Ertz and you make a catch and, and you lower your shoulder and you, you, you get someone good. and it, are you, I'm saying if this is like a Thursday practice or something, you're trying to get ready for a game day, are you going to get in trouble for putting 150% out there and really popping a starter, a defense, like a defender, a starter? Are you going to get yelled at for maybe trying too hard out there? No, that's uh, that's one of the things uh, Coach Flo, Coach Flores, uh, was was adamant about to to everyone. You know, no no one should be complaining about somebody practicing too hard. Um, obviously, you got to be smart within that. Um, at this point in the season, we're not going full tackle or anything. So after after the catcher, you're, you're kind of running, you're thudding up. But, but yeah, there there's there's no practicing too hard. So you, obviously, you got to be smart within that. Co- you mentioned Coach Flo, Coach uh, Brian Flores. What's your interaction with him, and what's his interaction with the practice squad in general? Um, so pretty much during the week, practice squad is full members of the team. You know, the only time we're kind of we kind of uh, separate from them is uh, Saturday, which is when we we they they head into like final prep meetings, and we head in to get an extra lift. So we lift four times a week uh, as practice squad members. That's kind of the only time we're separate. But I mean, he he's a he's a great leader. You know, he's not a super rah rah guy. He's a uh, Man, a few words, but you know, he means what he says. So he, he, I, I like him a lot. So that's great. I know he's some guy. I know he's a coach who, you know, regardless of what's going on around the building, it looks like he just is focused on the players, focused on winning. Right. Um, has a, just a, has a great pred, a pedigree coming in. And hey, I mean, it's a team you're going to beat. You beat the teams like Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, you know the Jets have tons of weapons. And who else did you guys beat? Was it Detroit? Uh, Indy. Indy, you know. Indy. I know it was blue. Yeah, you went to Indy and won. So yeah. they're tall. That's Indy and Philly are you know Super Bowl favorite type got play team starting the year, and and at times they played like that. So no, he's definitely a coach who, who you know he he seems like he's doing a great job. And 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 from what you're saying, you've had great relationship with him so far. So what's your situation like in Miami? Uh, practice ends. Uh, what type of um, like are you guys? In, they have you an extended stay. So I've actually been in a, a, a apartment complex since September, probably about the week after camp ended. Um, so basically, what they, what the, we have a, a really good player engagement uh, group with the Dolphins down here. So they have pretty good relationships with uh, apartment buildings around the area. Um, so I, I have a my lease, and my lease is uh, if I were to get released or picked up from another team, 
as long as I show proof of that from the Dolphins, you know, I can cancel my lease with no no fee or anything like that. So it's it's almost month to month. Uh, in the in the in the case that you know if you were to get released uh, unsuspected, but you don't got to pay pay your way out. So, but yeah, so I've got a pretty nice apartment up here. I'm enjoying my stay. So, yeah, Florida, you gotta love that <laughs> no state income tax. Uh, That's what it's all about. And and speaking of Florida, I I was just curious because this is a, a a hot discussion right now in the Philadelphia area. They played in 80 degree weather, and the Eagles aren't used to playing in 80 degree weather. And how do you? <laughs> feel when it comes to the temperature is it that much of a difference does it really make you that much tired in the third quarter compared to playing at the link when it's freezing and you're not as tired due to the fatigue well if you're if you're definitely not used to it it's definitely going to be it's, it's a new new thing you know you got it's just something new to adjust to but honestly this this past sunday was probably one of the more nice days of the year it wasn't too hot uh it's, it's definitely starting to cool off around here so and, uh, at, the, at the Hard Rock Stadium, we got a pretty nice setup to where um, the sun only shines on the opposing sideline. So uh, we we think that that is a pretty nice advantage for us. And obviously, we practice in the heat, so we're we're used to it now. But That's awesome. I will I will say, coming into training camp, it's it's a different animal. You know, you you really feel that heat. Yeah, I wanted to discuss training camp and. What were some of the things that you guys did or, or you did as a player individually, but as a team also to maybe avoid the heat? Because I know they want you to train in the heat, sure, but they don't want to kill you. Right, right. So we, we pretty much practice outside every day. Um, the only time we would go inside is obviously for lightning. Um, but to avoid, I mean, they, they preach hydra- hydration heavily around here. So, you know, we have our hydration, pretty much daily hydration tests. Uh, they're, that's something they really push, and honestly, it's you, you get used to it. But I mean, it's it's always tough when it's you never know when it's going to be super hot out there, so it can happen at any moment. You mentioned training camp, and 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 you finished the last three games with a catch, and then really had a really great day, six for seventy eight versus the Saints in your last game in the Superdome. I'm jumping through my phone on Twitter with you catching the ball <laughs> down the seam. Uh, we're all excited. And again, Chris and I share the same agent. So we share a lot of the similar stories and conversations and, uh, you know, I've been through a lot together. So I'm just ecstatic for you. Talk about training camp, that grind was what you expected, et cetera. Um, it's definitely what I expected. With that being said, that doesn't mean it was easy. Uh, you knew, you knew coming in is it was, was going to be hard. So, Looking back on it now, it feels like so long ago and that being in training camp felt like such a long time. You know, it's a little over a month, month and a half. And that whole grind was tough. You know, you're staying in a hotel. You're doing the same thing every day, day after day. It gets gets really repetitive. But, I mean, uh, I would say once preseason games started, which is, to me, the biggest difference between college and pro training camp is you actually have games throughout training camp kind of gives you something to look forward to you know you're not just looking forward to that season opener uh, but for me after preseason games started that's when uh you kind of started to see a little light at the end of the training camp tunnel and uh, obviously you got to be ready to play you know that's what you're looking forward to you give your uh, do everything you can with your opportunity once you get in those preseason games I'll, I'll, I'll say this the one thing that i struggled with was not playing the entire game i was like okay mm-hmm. it's preseason game one you're gonna play the entire fourth quarter so you sit on the bench for two and a half, three hours plus a halftime. And it's like, okay, go in and play. You're like, wow, like this is really hard. I have to get warm. Do I try to get warm throughout the game? Well, what if a tight end goes down? I need to go in. So it's like a mental thing. How did you handle that hurdle? Because I know you played a ton of special teams at Temple, obviously being the starting tight end there. What was that, what was that hurdle like for you? That's a good point. You know, that was, that was, that was tough for me as well. You know, um, just, I was – I think the first game I want to say I played a good amount was the second half. Um, at the time, we, we had six tight ends on the roster, I believe. Um, one of them was down. Dwayne Allen was was not playing in the first game, so I knew I might, might get a little more, more time in the first game. Uh, but you're right, just standing on the sideline, I remember feeling so tight. My ankles were hurting from being taped, just standing there not doing anything. Uh, I pretty much, I pretty much knew I wasn't going to get in until the second half, though. So uh, once that uh, halftime hit, you know, I'm stretching. I'm, I got the bands on, doing my hammy stretches, rolling out my ankles, uh, just, just trying to do everything I can to get ready. And then I see once, 
once you get that first play out of the way, you kind of, you kind of, you know, exhale, you feel loose, you, and then you feel ready to go. What's the difference from film? from the NFL level to college when it comes to attention to detail? Is it way more in depth? Is it almost the same? What's the difference or comparisons? Um, there's, there's a lot of similar things. Obviously you're, you know, you watch practice film every day, uh, a little bit of scouting film every day. Um, but, but with coach Foley back at Temple, you know, I, I feel like he, he really set us up well um, and taught us how to watch film. You know, he, he instilled a good process in us. So it doesn't feel too different from college. Um, yeah, honestly, that's it's, it's pretty similar. But, I mean, you, you obviously want to watch the opponent. you got to study more of the opponent. You know, they're, they're more – it's different than college just because of, the you know, the difference of talent. But uh, I'd, I'd say we – I got a pretty good process from college watching film. So. I, I would say to, to answer that question, one, the difference between college and pro when it comes to watching film-wise, you, there's some – there's some tight ends in the league that even the best ones, you're like, well, you're just not going to win that matchup. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's true. Khalil Mack versus the best blocking tight end in the league is still not an advantageous situation for that tight end and that offense. That would be the one thing where Chris and I in college, there really wasn't a situation where him one-on-one guy that we couldn't handle. And I would say that for the majority of tight ends in college. And again, Chris and I were more physical tight ends in college blocking wise, because that's what we were asked to do. Uh, but the touch on the Ed Foley thing, you know, Chris and I have a huge love and respect for him, a guy who's changed our lives. Uh, but, I mean, we met, and really the culture at Temple that Matt Rule and his staff and, and Jeff Collins continued. We we're just talking about Chris and I's tenure there. We met a ton. We lived in that facility. Chris and I lived at Diamond Green, <laughs> 10th and Diamond. Our facility was on 10th and Diamond. I mean, we lived a basketball's roll away from the facility and – we literally lived in the facility and slept somewhere else. That's all it was. Um, and that's – you come in with – it's so weird in the NFL too, and you could talk about this, Chris. I know you're a grinder. I know you're a worker, a weight room guy, a film guy, you know, getting right your body right in the training room. The day ends at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the NFL. People just start leaving. I struggle with that because I'm like, uh, I have to work harder. I have to be in the <laughs> building. But, like, it's kind of like work smart, not – not hard type of situation. How'd you handle with the difference, not changing work ethic, but just the schedule because the NFL is all day. Your work eight right. to five, eight right. to six. But in college, it's like work from six to noon, go from class to noon to five, noon to eight, mm-hmm. and then go back to the facility. So your day was more full of stuff. How have you handled that transition? You're right. You're right. Uh, the schedule was definitely an adjustment I had to make uh, coming in my first year or so. Uh, I would say, like you said, the day, day pretty much ends at five. I would say uh, my main focus was uh, try to get my body right, you know, as, as much as I can for the next day, get get uh, physically ready uh, at the facility, uh, make sure I, you know, then I would stay after for dinner there. They served us dinner there at the facility, which is, which is great. Um, and then as far as film-wise, you know, I, I like to take take my iPad home and pretty much study it study on my iPod at, iPad at home, but, um, but yeah, not having class and then having to come back to the facility. Honestly, I, I like it a lot better now <laughs> just because, you know, you don't got to worry about all, all you got to focus on is football. So I, I feel like that that's helped me a great amount and just becoming a better football player, you know, not having to focus on class. Obviously there's stuff at home. When, once you get home, you still got to focus on stuff outside stuff like you know you might have your family calling you or friends or whatever but uh, that's why i like to stay stay right after you know just just to kind of give myself some time uh just you know physically prepare for the next day yeah it's great to be a professional athlete (laughs) it's great man you got to really soak it in as much as you can uh that is your one focus and when college is like man we were so busy there was like almost anxiety like oh gotta get back to the facility gotta do this like if you were just like hanging in your there was never a day during the week we were just like watching football we'd catch like the second half of games on monday night it was such a grind and it did prepare us and it's a kudos to those two staffs that you know you and i played for because when you get to the league it's not a step down per se but you're like wow i just have to focus on football now when before i was so spread thin with things so uh no that's fantastic go ahead hunter if you have one yeah, no, I was just going to say, coming from a D3 
hockey, you know, college athlete, I felt overwhelmed with my schedule. And it, it's nowhere even close to the D1 football level. But you guys are talking about preparing your body and all that. The amount of times I skipped foam rolling and the hang clean <laughs> sets, I'm like, no wonder why I'm retired now. I couldn't stand hang cleaning and deadlifting on Tuesday mornings before practice. I'm sneaking in the back trying to do two sets instead of four. <laughs> Chris, Chris, talking about your time, you talked about lifting four days a week there in Miami. Take us through your schedule, you know, briefly day by day, like what days are working hard on the others. I just remember in Chicago, it was like, okay, prepare your body for Thursday. I mean, Wednesday and Thursday, because mm -hmm. you're going to get every scout team, special teams rep. You're going to get every okay. tight end rep. You're going to be gassed. Like you're just spread thin, especially if teams are on no up tempo or there's always a no huddle period. Like, and again, folks, to put it, to explain to you, you have to continue to perform on the practice squad. There's no like, oh, okay, like I've been on this team now. There's never a day where you're like, hey, I'm good for here for three, four weeks, maybe a month. I'm here for the whole year. Right. I know Chris is living day to day, week to week, because that's it. You can be cut on Sunday. I was cut in Chicago for 24 hours. Or like, we think you're going to bring you back. We don't know. Hang out at the hotel. So I'm getting off topic from the question, but that's just kind of an insight <laughs> of what I went through, what I know Chris is going through. Talk about your week to week, Chris, what days are – more taxing the others and, and, and maybe more mental days. Sure. So uh, start with Monday. Um, well, th this week we were lucky enough to have a victory Monday, you know, after defeating the Philadelphia Eagles. They throw that in. But uh, <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, we haven't had too many victory Mondays this year. So what my, a typical Monday would look like is uh, 10, 1045 a.m. offensive lift, lift and run, which will just be. Um, maybe six striders, uh, you know, six yard striders, uh, and then a, a nice full body lift. You know, this week was a lunge, lunge squats, uh, you know, some shoulder work, some hamstring work, and then we'll go in. Hunter would uh, be dead. Watch, watch, watch the whole <laughs> game, uh, whole game film. <laughs> so Monday will be special, uh, maybe four, forty-five minute special teams meeting hour or two offense and defensive meeting and then team meeting to wrap it up at the end. So Monday, Monday for me, usually about 10 45 AM till, and then we would have a rookie meeting after that. So 10 45 to five 30, but no practice, mostly just in the, in the film room, uh, aside from obviously that lift Tuesdays off. Uh, I enjoy, you know, it, it, Tuesdays off really makes a week feel shorter because once you come back, you know, you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to, to handle, What's your off days look like? Are you a guy that's going to go into the facility or are you a guy that needs your time away? Right. So, so today's Tuesday, obviously. So today was my off day. Another off day after yesterday, which is super nice. Um, so my typical Tuesday routine uh, is to go in, you know, hit the hot tub for about 10 minutes, cold tub for about 30 minutes, grab some lunch to go, and then uh, start break down the next opponent for – for, for film. Um, so after I hang up here, I'll probably uh, start scouting the Jets Jets a little bit, you know, fill out their, write out their whole depth chart, uh, some special team uh, points of emphasis, stuff like that. And then, you know, I'll pretty much relax the rest of the day, get off my feet. Um, and then Wednesday for me is pretty much my game day. Um, I would say the same. That's the same for most practice squad players. That's our first practice back. Usually, it's usually the padded practice day. If you're going to go pads that week, we're co we're coming down to that number. Uh, you only have a set, set certain amount of padded practices for, throughout the whole year. We're I think we're getting down to maybe two or three left. I would say, um, but yeah. So Wednesday is really my game day. Um, uh, typical Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday, pretty much the same schedule. Uh, the first meetings at seven thirty. So for me, I wake up about 6.30, uh, get into the facility around 7, eat, eat some breakfast, do a little iPad study right before the meeting, uh, just to, you know, refresh on the install from last night. Uh, and then, you know, meetings until practice, practice on the field probably about 11, uh, 11, to, 11 to 1. Uh, Wednesday, I will lift after practice. So that'll be a kind of auxiliary lift, you know, some some chest, some legs, a little bit of full body stuff. But and then lunch and meetings again till about five thirty. So that's about the same on on Wednesday and Thursday, pretty much the same schedule. Uh, Friday coming in is they call it Fast Friday, even though 
it's not too fast. <laughs> uh, half day or no? So, uh, somewhat, somewhat. It's half day meeting wise, but we're still pretty much full practice. No pads, obviously, but <clears throat> pretty much full speed uh, jog through. They call it a walk through, but it's really full speed. <laughs> yeah. Um, Are you, what time are you guys done around? Like two or three? Yeah, right around right around two. So Friday we'll come in seven thirty again. Uh, same same process up until the field. Uh, we'll get out around one one fifteen. Then I'll get a, a, a third lift. My third lift of the weekend. Uh, that, that one I like. You know, upper body, some arms. You need that. <laughs> Maybe you want to stay a little longer. Yeah. Maybe get that fourth or fifth upper body lift a week. <laughs> so I get that upper body lift in, and then uh, if, if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky enough, uh, one of the um, strength strength assistants sets up uh, like massages and stuff. Uh, if I'm lucky enough, one of the active guys, you know, sometimes all those spots aren't filled. Uh, he 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 kind of he'll hit me up. You know, there's a spot open for a massage here. I'll take any time I can get. It's usually the end of the day. Um, so I'll try to get a massage then Friday. Friday so Friday's nice. We're out of here around two. But then, uh, you know, you're pretty much just relaxing at home. You don't you don't have the energy to go out or anything once you get done. So And then Saturday, uh, we're in at eight. Get my fourth lift of the weekend. Um, for full body again, more, mainly lower body, though. And then we'll have a, a walkthrough in the indoor. Uh, for about half an hour, uh, right up until like eleven thirty, and then we're out of there. So, yeah, that's a full week, man. Then it's game day, <laughs> that is. and then you're you're hanging out. You know, that's the practice mm-hmm. run life. And again, it sounds people will say, "Well, that's great, man." It's like three, four days a week. Well, <laughs> you also would be cut on that Saturday. Yeah. I've been a part of that. I was a part of a. I think we had a maybe it was a Friday. I got cut. It was a Friday. Yeah, maybe a Friday or Saturday, regardless. I was with the Bears. Uh, we had a bunch of injuries in the outside linebacker position. They were like, came in, like six guys came in for a workout, literally. I think they signed mm-hmm. two of them. One guy came off IR or something. And they had to shuffle some numbers around. And I'm in the lift, and we had Nelson Spruce, fan of the show, fan of the podcast, a guy who came on to start our podcast. Um, he's with the XFL team in LA. We, we get started today, sign our contracts tomorrow, and we're off December 4th for a little mini camp. But, um, <clears throat> So Nelson was in the weight room with me, and we were, you know, sharing a rack, doing whatever's lift we were doing. And he looks at me and says, you see what's going on? I'm like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. He's like, there's 11 guys in here right now. One of us is getting cut. I'm like, oh, my God. You got to be kidding me. It's not going to be me, man. I've been playing great. I feel great. Everything's going well. Like, everything's trending in the right direction. Finally getting settled. I've been with the team for a month at this point. And uh, really good rapport with everybody. I walk in after the lift, and there's the Grim Reaper right mm-hmm. in my up freaking mm-hmm. locker, sitting in my locker. Oh, boy. I'm like, oh, my God, what's up? He said, grab your iPad. Coach wants to see you. You got to be kidding me. So, you know, at that point, you're already, like, saying, well, it's okay. You know, I did everything I could. Like, I'm already justifying it in my head, like, just to not have a panic attack. Yeah. And uh, I walk up, boom, got cut. Um, and John Fox actually cut me, not our GM for that time. Our GM cut me after training camp, you know, six, seven months later, eight months later, whenever it was. And, uh, John was great. He's like, listen, it's not you. We just have to switch some guys around. We're going to bring you back Monday. We think just be local. Woke up Monday morning after a strenuous weekend. Everyone's like going out in the city and doing a lot of stuff on the practice squad. I'm like, I cannot go out. I'm not on the team. That's just not, I can't make that rational in my mind. Um, yeah, so long story short, they called me back Monday, and uh, I was eating breakfast at the IHOP. They called me in at like <laughs> 9 a.m. said, you're back. Came in my locker, you know, and get embraced by the guys. So I know you – has that happened to you, Chris, or you've been steady Eddie? Well, uh, I, I will say – I forgot to mention that. On Saturday, so we come in at 8. Uh, it seems like every Saturday – so you, you mentioned the Grim Reaper. We kind of have a staff of Grim Reapers. You know, there's – <laughs> The, the main Grim Reaper, and then there's a couple of guys who kind of help round up the people they're they're looking for. So you come in Saturday, in the last last like five or six weeks, you 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 make that you you enter the building, you turn turn down the hallway to the locker room. There's always two two Grim Reapers standing outside the locker room on Saturday morning, and you're just like, 
Oh God! Don't say, please don't, don't say anything to me. You kind of put your head walking by them because you got to walk them by them to get into the locker room. Here, it's like I hope they don't grab me when I walk past them. <laughs> it's, it's pretty stressful, but but yeah, when I when I was cut, um, so I was actually I've passed the first cuts. I was actually cut that I think it was that Monday after the initial you know fifty three man rosters were set. Uh, I was cut. I want to say that Monday, yeah. After you know, they made they made a bunch of waiver claims after other teams had made their cuts. So you know, I was kind of coming into that day. I think it was a Monday. You know, I talked to my position coach. Uh, he, he he was kind of saying, you know, you're on that fringe right now. You know, you're 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 most likely looking at being inactive if you're staying. Um, you know, if they're bringing new guys in, you're probably one of the guys you know, headed out. So that, that was the case for me. Um, but, but leading up to that weekend, you know, when you know the, the first initial cuts are coming that Saturday, you know, we're, we're in a lift, we're outside doing our warm up, and they're grabbing guys out of the warm up to bring in, you know, to tell them to go get their playbook. So you see them coming out to the field. You're like, Oh, don't, please don't go. Please don't take me. You know, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, uh, crazy stuff. I no, I feel you brother. It's a, uh it's such great when you're in, but it's really bad when you're out. And as a guy yeah. who's, who's out right now trying to get back in and bless the play in the XFL, um, I feel you, man. It's a grind, but <laughs> that's great. I'm happy you're in your spot. Hopefully we didn't jinx you, Chris. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll yeah, be fine, so. man. Keep up the people doing great work. And, uh, and again, Hunter, do you have any uh, final questions for Chris here? Yeah, I guess up? what my final thing is, it's not really a question. I just find it interesting to hear someone who is anticipating that Wednesday practice as his game day while some of the veterans are probably thinking, oh, I can't wait for these padded practices to be over. It's just funny to see it from the other side, which I don't blame you because that is. That's your that's yep. your opportunity to make the, the most of it. But it's just uh, it's funny to hear it from the other side because I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there that – you hate Wednesday practices. No, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> no, I mean Wednesdays I remember the mon- Mondays of the NFL. Yeah, right. I heard, like I never was nervous for practice in college. I mean, I was nervous younger in my career, and I always had a little twinge of nervousness. But it was fun, and we competed. And Chris and I, we knew we were the starters, and we knew the game plan. And you know, you just knew, you just knew. You just, that's to me like the highest level of football per se. When you get to the NFL, it's like a business. <laughs> I mean, it really is. But but when you get to the league. Wednesday practices, I'm like a nervous wreck for like game day. I'm like, oh my god, Tuesday night, I'm like, can't sleep. Going to the facility, I know I'm made it another week, but it's like I got to perform today. Like, I dropped two balls last week, or you know, I'm okay. I went too hard, got a got a veteran hurt, or you know, <laughs> like you gotta toe that line. But uh, speaking of towing the lines, uh, just a quick question for Chris. A couple of Philly questions. Favorite? I know Chris is a big NBA Sixers fan. Favorite Sixer of all time. Oh, all time. Hmm. That's a good one. I might go with uh, my man Andre Iguodala. Oh, I, I was one, of, gonna... one of my favorite sixers of all time. You know, uh, most people oh are going to say God. Allen Iverson. Of course, of course, I love Allen Iverson. But uh, growing up, I mostly watched uh, Iguodala. So he he was one of the more fun ones to watch. Uh, got robbed of that dunk contest, by the way. He yes, did he get did. robbed. Yes, Dwight Howard, did. right? I believe it was Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson. Yeah, it was Nate Robinson. That's because wow, he was that... smaller, so it made it look like he his was sunk smaller, was and he really... had like unlimited attempts. So yeah, he got robbed. That's great, Nate Robinson knowledge. The quote: "The great Tony Bruno." <laughs> wow, Chris Meyer, what an answer, Andre Iguodala. Um, it's a sleeper we'll with... pick right there. That's a good one, Chris. That's a good one, Chris. I mean, Andre was good, and they moved him at the right time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so for my our last question here, favorite Philly cheesesteak? Where are you going? Mm. I'm going to uh, Dallas Andros. Dallas That's Andros. up near you, classic, right? Classic spot, yeah, Roxborough area. Actually, um, my first football team experience was on that that field across the street from Dallas Andros. That was my my first Pee Wee football team uh, with second Braves. Okay, okay, and then the final cool spot. Got the final dig a statement for me. Uh, my high school, who's a notorious powerhouse in the area, Archbishop Wood, <laughs> is playing Chris's high school this weekend. Which is this your first in uh, Cheltenham history? Oh, for sure. First, we we won the district championship this year for our first district championship in school history. So, how many wins? Definitely never you- made a state playoff appearance. <laughs> 
how many wins did you have in your entire career at Cheltenham? That's a tough one. I know my, my senior year we were six and six. Okay, so you guys um, you won, won no, a little we, bit, and we've only we've only made the playoffs one one time throughout my uh, tenure at, at the high school. So, all right. Well, hey, we'll put a we'll pull a put a Dalessandro's <laughs> cheesesteak on it. There you go. There you go. I like us coming home with it, man. I like us this year. It's going to be nice when you come home and you're going to have this NFL money and <laughs> I'm going to have a free cheesesteak. I can't wait. Oh, boy. Uh, so, the hey. Panthers are taking it. No, nah, it's going to be a big win for Wood this weekend, I hope. And, and uh, <laughs> really happy for Ryan Nace and what they've done at Shelton, man. He's a great guy. And, uh, yeah, he's really, places. really turning it around. Yeah, I mean, Mac, who's tearing it up. Their star receiver at Temple. He's a stud. He's going to be a great player. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Chris Myrick, everybody, Pro Star Sports. <laughs> Share the same agency, have a lot of fun together. Uh, great guy, uh, local Philadelphia guy who's now with the Dolphins and, and just tearing it up, I'm sure. Um, and we're really uh, honored and blessed to have you on. Thanks for joining the Not For Long Sports Podcast, Chris. Thank you, guys. Good luck Good luck today and tomorrow with the XFL, man. Do your thing. You're going to kill it out there. Thanks, brother. I'll, uh, I'll see you in South Beach. <laughs> there you go. Let's link, link up.